All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another one of my Rail Oviedo career modes. Today is episode 18. It's going to be the first episode of my third season in charge at Oviedo. We did qualify for European competition, which is a massive step up for us, considering we started this career in the Liga Adelante, the second tier of Spanish football. Obviously, we had a downward decline towards the end of last season. Though. We were basically bossing it. We moved to legendary. It got a lot harder. We just about finished sixth place and got a European spot. We still got to qualify in Europe, so we're not automatically in the group stages. We're going to do all that today. Uh, I have played a little bit ahead of time like I tend to do, so there's a bit of catching up to do. I haven't played any matches, I've just done the summer transfer window, so I spent a little bit of the money they gave me, well, I spent most of the money they gave me, they didn't give me a lot. And I asked you last episode what I should do in terms of whether I should do a financial takeover or not. We're going to sort all that out once we've caught you up to date. So first things first, let's get you caught up. Okay, the first thing to do was accept my pre-season tournament invite. I decided to go the European International Cup, taking place in England four star difficulty 8 million euros up for grabs then the board told me they wanted me to get to the quarter final of the Europa League which I thought was quite uh, quite ambitious considering the, the monies they've given me to spend so like last season I decided to simulate the preseason so I could crack on with the proper season playing Hamburg in the first game we actually managed to get a 1-0 win Ian Acho with the goal although Neves did get injured and very annoyingly he would be out for six weeks so he's gonna miss all the preseason second game was up against Norwich again I'm simulating it and this one actually ended 1-0, Nori got our goal. Then I had a transfer offer for Kone, one of the original players. I was offered 2.5 million euros by Celta Vigo. I wasn't too keen on selling him, so I said, if you give me 4 million euros, he's yours. Okay, for my third game, I was taking on high-flying Leicester at home. And we actually managed to grab the win in this one, 2-1. Kone actually got a goal, as did Munir. Red card for Henry, though. So we moved on to the semi-finals of this pre-season tournament. Aston Villa next. And we grabbed another 2-1 win. Goals from Chambers and Borja Valle. And then it was the final versus Anderlecht. It's always a Belgian. Can we get the win in this pre-season tournament? The answer to that question is yes. It's a third 2-1 win in a row. Injury to Miguel, but goals for Rahman and Munir. Got myself a nice bit of prize money for that as well. Now, this was great news. One of our best players, Sergi Sampa, finally returned from injury. We missed him a lot last season. Good to have him back. Time to do a bit of business now. A chance to buy youngster Briel Donald Imbolo. Everyone loves this guy. He got a lot of potential, like a young Lukaku. Going to be expensive though, 14 million euros. But I identified that I needed a stronger striker up there, a big lad, and I think this is the guy to lead us to future success. And with the signing of Imbola, I had a chance to sell Kone for 2.9 million euros, which was less than I originally wanted for him, but enough to make some money back on the Imbolo deal in the end. And he was gone, like that. One of the originals, Kone, we will miss you. We received a massive transfer offer for Munir, 16 million euros, which is a lot more than we spent on him. I think we spent like seven or eight on him. He hasn't actually been that good for us, so I was seriously considering selling him. I asked them for a bit more money though. If they give him the best part of 21 million euros, he's all theirs. And they did actually end up making the offer, which would represent a massive uh, profit for me. However, Munir turned down the contract. He didn't want to leave uh, Spain to go to Italy, so he's staying put. We don't get the 21 million euros. And we also made a new left-back signing, Nacho. Henry's good, but he's young. I don't think he's strong enough to hold down the left-back spot. This guy could be a game-changer at left-back. And now you're up to date, guys. Let's jump back into the action. Okay, so you're up to date. You've seen what we've done. Imbolo, Nacho, decent transfers, but we are out of money. And having looked at the comments you guys left on last episode, most of you say I should go with the financial takeover option. I need more money. They're not giving me enough to compete in Europe. Let's face it, I've got a young squad. I need to invest in it. The other thing some of you have said is that I should go back down to world class. Now, this is something I'm not going to do. If I'm going to take the money, the financial takeover, I'm not going to go off legendary. I'm just going to make it work on legendary. I believe I can. I'd rather it be challenging, but be given resources to make it you know, easier for me. And now we've got a first game of the third season. It's a European qualifying game against Dynamo Moscow. Now, if we don't qualify over these two legs, we're out. The whole dream of getting into Europe was useless. So it's very important we get off to a good start. We are going to get more money from the financial takeover, but we haven't been able to spend it yet. So we've got to work with the squad we've got and the two new signings we've made and hopefully do some damage. This is the team we're going to play. 4-3-3 formation. Sampa is back from his injury, so we've got him back to play with. That was a huge loss for us. Come on, boys. The team is a lot better now. There's no weak links. Our lowest rated player is the youngster Barrios. He's got a lot more potential to be higher rated than 71. So this is a good squad. This is a very proud moment for me. Oviedo playing in European competition again. They played in the UEFA Cup about 15 years ago and I've returned them to European competition. But I do not want to be here just to make up the numbers, guys. I want to get results. I want to try and climb and I want to try and take this club up another level if possible. Player debuts for Nacho and Imbolo. 14 million euros spent on Imbolo. 4.4 on Nacho. Both going to be big players for us, hopefully. There's Imbolo. Come on, son. I've got a lot counting on you, boy. Here we go, lads. Keep it simple. Let's do this. A new chapter. Forget about the, the struggle we had towards the end of last season. We were struggling to score. We were struggling to even draw. 
That's going to be different this season. We've made the team better, and I believe in it. Get rid of that. No! Oh, boys! That's just an open cross. They're so lethal, man. One cross, one header, and it's a goal. We can't have this nonsense happen to us again this season. We have to go and score a goal. That's an away goal conceded as well. Look at this. Throw in, goes past him, crosses it in, and he just puts it in. Nothing I can do about it. Right, we've got to score. Imbolo, what have you got from this right-hand side? He's cut in. Imbolo, looking for Iheanacho. Hit it! Oh, that was great play. Terrible shot, though. Okay, half-time. We're 1-0 down. We need to go more attacking at home, so I'm going to go two up front. I'm going to take Barrios off for Erdegaard. Give him a half in there. Come on, Martin. Great running from Sampa. That's what we've missed. Sergi Sampa's going to put it in the middle. It's a great ball in from Sergi. He's made that all himself, bless him. We've missed that massively. Sampa, play it. Into Iheanacho. Iheanacho, ride the challenge. Iheanacho, that's great. What a tackle from Christopher Sampa. That was a goal opportunity if I'd ever seen one. Sampa, yes, in to Bergwin, to Martin, Erdegaard, looking over. Ball into the box. Oh, my God, boys, it's decent pressure. The final whistle's gone. It's an away goal we've conceded. We're 1-0 down in the first leg. It's not good, but I, I have hope. Because in the second half, I changed formation. We got things going. Right, there is a second leg. It's in a week from today. And I've got 53 million to spend now. Now, that's a lot of money, yes. But it's not as much as you think. Because what I've realised is my squad's kind of based a little bit on a lie, isn't it? Because a lot of my players are on long-term loans. So Bergwin, Nauri, Chambers, Erdegaard and Neves. If I want to keep them... I need to actually pay for them. And some of these loans are going to run out soon. Chambers goes in January. Bergwin goes in January. Uh, I think Erdegaard, Neves and Nori will be here for longer. So if I want to keep Bergwin or Chambers, I need to try and buy them. I don't think I can buy them until their loan runs out. So I need to save some money. That could cost me, you know, 10 million for both of them maybe. So I need to save a little bit of money for them. Meanwhile, we need to work on improving the squad. Right, guys, this is pretty much the biggest game of my Real Oviedo management career. If I don't win this game then I'm out of the Europa League. And if I'm not in the Europa League, then I haven't achieved my goal of taking us up a level. I'm changing the team up a little bit. I'm going to play this formation. It's like a 4-4-2 formation. Bergwin out wide with Munir. Ian Atcher and Mbolo up front together to start. Come on, boys. We can do this. Leave it all on the pitch, I believe. Neves to Ian Atcher. Ian Atcher, look for the 1-2 of Mbolo. Mbolo, try and find Ian Atcher if you can. We need a little bit of chemistry between those two. I feel like they're not really working together right now. Oh, great save, Julian. You kept us in this tie. Kept us in Europe with that save. Oh no, we've got an injury. Oh no, Bolo's out. That's the last thing we needed. Right, okay. Um, we're going to put Rahman on up front, but our record signing in Bolo has got injured. Not good news, but if we win the game and we go through in Europe, I won't mind. I can take it. Munir, going to try and run in again. He's still got it. Munir, Munir, hit it. Munir, with a strike. What a save. Ruben Neves with the corner. Whip it in. Attack it. Header, off the bar. Finish it. No, off the bar again. We are cursed! We're absolutely cursed! We just need one goal to get back in this tie and it will not come, but we're trying. Iheanacho. Yes, play Munir. Here we go, Munir. You've been good this game so far. Another opportunity for you here. Munir, keep going. Put it back in. Munir. Oh, not the best ball. Iheanacho, finish it! It's gone in! Come on! It was a terrible finish. It went straight to the keeper, but I don't care. He got it past him. It's 1-0 on the day, 1-0 on aggregate. We've both got away goals, so as things stand, it would go to extra time. That's all I needed, boys. Now we can kick on. Great play from Munir. I can't say it was great play from Ian Acho, to be honest. The control was good. The finish was average, but it went in. That's all that matters. Come on, boys. Our first ever goal in European competition has been scored. Head it out. Head it out. Well done. Get there. Someone get there. Sampa's going to make that. Sampa, there's a ball on. Play it. Sampa's seen it. It's a great ball for Rahman if you can bring it down. Rahman's got this. Rahman, you can put us through to the Europa League group stages with a finish here, Rahman. Finish it. Rahman, come on. What a through ball from Sergi Sampa. Off the back of their corner. We've hit them on the break. Oh, my God. We've scored two goals on Legendary. Can you believe it? Rahman's come off the bench for our record signing in Bolo, who's got injured. But the old boy, Rahman, has done it. That goal should put us through to the group stages. All we've got to do is keep it to it. Even if they score one, we still go through on away goals, I think. Sampa into Erdogan. I reckon we can score another one there because they're committing for it now. They're going forward. They know they're going out. They're committing all sorts of bodies. Ruben Neves is through. He's going to score. We've got three goals. Break out the champagne. It's a Christmas miracle. Come on, boys. Unbelievable scenes. Three goals. We are 1-0 down going into this game. Honestly, I thought we were going out. Ruben Neves has come through for us once again. Yes, come on. There's the final whistle. I would have taken 2-0 happily, but 3-0 is just an absolute 
beautiful result, icing on the cake. We're through to the Europa League group stage. The dream is not dead, it's well and truly alive. Ian Acho has been given man of the match. He got himself a goal, as did Neves and Rahman. An assist for Ian Acho, Sampa and Munir as well. Now, it's a good problem to have, but one thing we are going to have to contend with going forward is the packed out schedule Europa League gives you. You know, we've been playing those Thursday night games as well as the league games, cup games. We're going to have to use our whole squad. We need to buy some more players so we've got a bigger squad. Wow. Talk about bad luck. We're through in the Europa League, but Mbolo is out for seven months. He's played two games for us. We spent more money on him than any other player. 14 million euros, I think it was. And he's going to miss most of the season. Seven months. It's August now. He's not going to be playing again until like March next year. So he's basically out for the season. 14 million down the drain. I mean, that makes me feel a lot better about taking the financial takeover. Such a wounder, man. Seven months. Ridiculous. In other news, we have got some transfers that can be done. We cannot. We could sign Yana Zai for 25 million. He's worth 26. We could sign this Trigger Rowers guy. He's worth 21 for 24 million euros. I'm trying to sign people on a good deal where you're making, you know, you're getting them underneath their value. So if you want to sell them, it's a good price. Fred is worth 21 and a half. We can get him for 25. Tar is worth 11. They've accepted 11. I want a centre back. He's 78 rated. He's decent. This Ryderwald guy is worth seven and a half. We can get him for 9.9. .9, but I'm still trying to get Channel Oglu. Uh, this Nathan guy at Chelsea looks like an option. Oliver Torres is estimated worth for 27. So if I can get him less than that, that would be a good deal. Okay, Zuma doesn't want to come. I'm not going to offer him any more money. I don't need Zuma, I've decided. Barrios has signed a new contract with us, which is great. Okay, so Chanaloglu is not going to come either. Oliver Torres could happen. Any one of these boys we can take. Torres, 21 million. He's worth 27. I've got the potential to make the most profit on the Torres deal. Although he was 110 grand a week. He's not particularly fast. He's got great reactions, great agility, excellent vision at 93, great ball control. He's not a very good shooter of the ball, which is a shame. I like a cam to be able to hit them from long range. Only got 51 for shot power and 64 for long shots. But he's got a lot of room to grow. If I sign Torres and maybe I sign Tar or Ryderwald, I reckon I've enough money left to sign Chambers in January. I don't think I should go with pace because I've got money, I've got Bergwin for now, I've got people with pace and they're not really delivering for me. So I need to go with someone with something different. I think Torres offers that in his amazing vision in the cam role. Ryderwald can do a job at left back and CDM though, which I like. Tell you what, I'm going to sign Ryderwald. I'm going to sign him. I like the look of him. He's not too expensive. 9.9 .9 million. And I'm going to go for Oliver Torres. I think it's a good deal. I want to get him in my club. Oliver Torres is now my highest rated player in there. And I'm actually going to try five at the back formation next game. So I don't concede goals. And I'm just going to use the boys that I've got going forward to get me them. Okay, our first match of the BBVA season is against Levante at home. Let's try and kick it off with a win. If we can play like we did against uh, the Dinamo Moscow boys last game, we'll be doing all right. I'm going to start Rahman this time round. Uh, Munir's a bit tired, so he's going to have a little break. But the five at the back formation is being debuted. Let's see how we get on. Still gutted about losing in Bolo for basically the whole season, but we have got Oliver Torres making his debut. Ryderveld comes straight into the team. Nacho's in there as well. He's not been with us long. So it's a new look team, and I feel like we can do something good this season. I don't think realistically we're going to win the league, but if we can qualify for Europe again, maybe have a run in the cup and do well in the Europa League itself, I'll be very happy. First stop, we've got to beat Levante, who are also playing five at the back. Is it it? Oh my God, what a save. Callum Chambers, play that ball down the line. Yes, Rahman, you can get away from him here. Rahman could be through. Come on, Rahman. You had a chance like this last game, you didn't score it. I need to score this one, Rahman! Oh, for crying out loud. Yes, Oliver's won the tackle. Oliver, play it to Ruben Evans. We've got numbers here. Ruben, in for Rahman. Free Inacho, hit it. Inacho, what a save. Sampa's read that. Sergi, that's great from you. Bang. In behind for Iheanacho. Iheanacho, play it one more. To Rahman, hit it. Oh, come on. We've got to score these. Right, let's have the whistle now. They've got the ball. Okay, nil-nil draw. You know what? I'll take that because we're on the up. Obviously, we won last game. We drew this game, but we haven't lost in two games, which is an improvement for us. So if we can get a win in our last game of the episode, which is the next one, I'll be very happy with my four. Right, it's transfer deadline day. We've still got uh, about 11.3 million euros left, but I'm not going to spend it because I want to have some money left in January so I can try and make Callum Chambers a permanent transfer and maybe Bergwin as well. Okay, the transfer window is closed for us. We've done our business. I'm pretty happy with our squad. Again, I'm still gutted about the Mbolo injury but we're going to have to just suck that up. Okay, my final game of the episode is huge. It's against Oviedo's biggest rivals, Sporting Gijon. They're in the same league as us now, and we basically need to win this, not just for our form and just to prove we're getting better, but because it's against our biggest rivals. We played them in the cup, I think, last season, and they ended up knocking us out, I think, on away goals. We need to get our revenge away at their gaff against these mugs. I'm going to do the same five at the back formation because I thought we were pretty solid last game. The only difference is Munir is starting up front instead of Rahman. Let's go. 
Torres. In for Ian Acho. Ian Acho to Manir. Manir, bang, for Ian Acho. It's goal time. Ian Acho's not going to miss this. Come on! I actually thought he was going to miss it. I said it to make myself feel confident, but he actually scored it. We're getting better. I'm telling you, the transfers we've made, I'm being a little bit more patient on the ball as well. I'm just trying to keep possession. Because when I remember to keep possession, I concentrate. I can handle legendary. It's just when I get a little bit impatient, I run around trying to get the ball like I'm playing online. That's when I come a cropper. But it's been good today, lads. We lost the first game, but since then we've looked good. I want to win this game against these sporting hee Hon mugs. hee haw. Oliver Torres. Use that vision. Oliver Torres' through balls are so good. He's going to be crucial for us this season. Here's Muneer. Muneer. Through ball now. Bang. For Oliver Torres. Oliver Torres. Hit it. Oliver Torres. We're 2-0 up. What a signing already this guy is being. My voice has gone so high because I've now scored five goals in the last three games. And I've only... Con Hang on. I haven't conceded a goal in the last three games yet. I don't think I have. I don't want to jinx it. But something's changed. And I feel good about myself again. Yes. Tell you what, maybe this five at the back formation is the future. Out. Out! Oh my god, what a save from the keeper. Is that down? Oh my god, what a strike from the edge of the box. Okay, he's absolutely hammered that past us. It's 2-1. We've conceded a goal. We've probably relaxed a little bit. We've got a bit overconfident. We need to not let this win slip, boys. I want the three points. It's crucial. Nice football. Neves, play that through ball. Here we go, Oliver Torres. Look for Iheanacho in behind. Get the third goal. Ianacho, score for me. Bang. Oh, you've got to put that away. That would wrap up the points. Yes, come on. Final whistle's gone. It's another win for us. We're doing okay. We didn't create as many chances as them that time, but we did enough. We were efficient. Ruben Neves gets a 7.8 for us in the end. He was our man of the match. Goal for Torres and Ianacho. Assists for Neves and Munir. Well, overall, I'd have to say quite a successful episode. We've got four points from two games in the league. We're still in the Europa League. We're going to play our first Europa League game in our group stage next episode. Look at our group, by the way. We've got Chelsea in there, as well as Rio and Aberdeen. Okay, so I'm happy to take on Aberdeen and Rio. I think I can beat them. Chelsea's going to be a difficult game, but we want to play the big clubs in the Europe. That's what it's all about. And I'm happy with the way things have gone in this episode. If you've enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. But until then, don't go changing.